Hey, Lions 2 people. We're in the home stretch now, and so we're going to take a look at a couple of different lessons this week. The first one is from Africa, and this is Yona Kanamuzei. And Yona was living in the uh, 1900s, actually, mid 19th century in the 1960s, and so this will be a little bit closer to our era. We're also going to look this week at Helen Rosevere, one of my favorite. Christians in the world, and um, she just went home to be with the Lord. But let's go ahead and pray, and we'll talk about Yona today. Father, as we take a look at Yona, uh, I pray that we will, you will give us the same courage to live for you, to be faithful to your word, to live out the gospel in everything. I love you, and I love my students, and I pray that he will be a great example for them. And I ask this in your name, Lord. Amen. Well, after two years in Burundi, studying in seminary, Yona was anticipating returning to his congregation in Niamata, which was in northern Rwanda. His home church instead urged him to go and minister to the refugees from the Hutu-Tutsi Wars. This would be between Rwanda and Burundi. And they said, man, you need to go minister to the refugees in these camps. Uh, the government was resettling them in Bugacera, although Bugacera wasn't like... Um, it wasn't like Club Med. It wasn't like a resort or anything like that. It was mostly swamps filled with crocodiles. Sure, what better place to put people than in swamps with crocodiles? Crazy, but that's what they thought. Uh, as you might imagine, the people were not happy to be there, and Yona was in charge of distributing food for them. And when you're hungry, sometimes the distribution can become a little bit chaotic. There never seemed to be enough, and some tried dishonestly to get more than their share, so not only would he have to be... Um, a pastor, a preacher of the gospel, and a distributor of food, he would also have to be somewhat of a police force to keep people from stealing that food. Uh, it was a difficult task, and his strong faith helped him to prevail in the long run. Yona began discipling Christian refugees, and he met in a lar uh, underneath a large tree in order to get them out of the sun. He read the scriptures to them, and he explained the text. That was it. I know, verse by verse, he would just take them through a book of the Bible, and these people were growing in their faith leaps and bounds. I wonder why we don't do that today. I try to do it in my classes for that same reason, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. While he was there, he built a house for his wife Mary and their children, and Yona was actually admired for the way that he treated his wife. He treated her like his beloved friend and not as a slave, and let me just throw my two cents worth in there. My, my wife is my beloved friend as well, and I wouldn't have it any other way. She is extraordinarily valuable, and I urge you gentlemen to treat your wives, your future wives, that way. The woman would ask Mary, doesn't he ever beat you or curse you? As though that was low norm, which it was, but not for Mary. And Mary answered, no, instead, sometimes he asks my forgiveness, and I ask his, and Jesus forgives us both, and then we pray together crazy, but it works. 1961, some Tutsis became terrorists wanting to replace their own government with a monarchy. The terrorists were called Inyenzi, which in that language means cockroaches. Inyenzi. And it made a bad situation worse, and soon any Tutsi tribe member was considered to be part of the Inyenzi. If you're Tutsi, then you're part of this uh, group of terrorists. In 1963, the Bugacera region was thriving under Yona's ministry and leadership, but rumors began to spread that the Inyenzi were planning to invade Rwanda, and twice they attempted to make uh, entry into Rwanda through Burundi. The Rwandan government arrested hundreds of people, although few were actually tried. They were arrested simply because somebody spread gossip and said, I think that guy belongs to the Inyenzi. To be uh, thrown into the prisons was pretty dangerous. Uh, the people were, the prisons were filthy and way overcrowded. And despite the danger, Yona continued his work. One night he ignored the curfew that had been mandated by the army uh, in order to find and bury the body of a church worker who had been shot dead in the street earlier that day. He encouraged the Christians to gather in his house to pray. In January of 1964, a friend told Yona, you're going to die. Yona said, why do you say that? And the friend said, for two reasons, your belief in the word of God and for the way that you love everyone. Wow, if you're going to die, if you're going to be killed for something, what a way to go. It's because you love the word of God, you believe the word of God, 
and you love everyone. And Jonah said, those two things, the word of God and the love of God, I can't live without. Amen. Me too. He and Mary prayed together. God, you called me and you sent me here. You know me and the days that I've lived and the days which remain. If it's your will to call me home, I'm ready. And on January the 23rd in their family worship time, Jonah read from Psalm, chapter, Psalm 27, verses 3 and 4. And that night, six soldiers burst into Jonah's home and they took him out for questioning. Jonah and Mary knew that when the soldiers took somebody at night, they were never seen again. His eight-year-old son, Wesley, his eight-year-old son, Wesley, said, You'll hurry back, won't you, Papa? And Jonah said that he would. With two more prisoners, Jonah was driv driven north uh, across the Naya Barongo River. Jonah took time to inquire about the salvation of his two fellow prisoners. And um, by taking their possessions and putting them in a pile, they left them pretty much without anything on the trip. The three prisoners were taken to a bridge, and before he put down his journal uh, in the pile, Yona wrote in it, We're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. He asked that his things be given to his wife, and a soldier told him he should pray instead of asking him. So Yona did. The, the soldier just gave him permission to pray, so like, Amen. Yona said, Lord, you know I haven't done anything against the government. I pray that you will help these people who don't know what they're doing. Yonah was led to the edge of the bridge, and as he went, he sang to Jesus, There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, where the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Yonah was shot right through the skull, and they threw his body into the river. The soldiers were so perplexed by Yonah's faith that they released the other man. He was one who related to Mary Yonah's final moments. think about a guy named Yon, like Yonah and I think to myself, my goodness, all he did was serve the Lord faithfully. All he did was preach the gospel. All he did was feed homeless people who were transiting, transitioning from one country to another. And such is the darkness of our world that even a man who's giving his life to better others and was actually making an improvement in the culture of both countries, Burunda, Burunda, Burundi excuse me, and Rwanda. What kind of a difference are you making? Does it attract the attention of somebody else? Is there somebody at your work who's irritated by the fact that you love Jesus and you love people? Let them see that you believe in his word by putting it into action. Live that way even if today means it's the day that you're going to die. I want to do that too. Pray for me that I will. I love you. We'll see you tomorrow.